I was really surprised by what all is included in Generations Math Level 2. I want to give you a look inside so that you can know better what to expect. If you've never used Generations Math before, let's see what you can expect to see inside. First, there is your content, what it's going to cover, 12 different chapters, but this will cover your entire school year. That's just how it's divided up. There's actually 145 days worth of material to complete, at least the way that it is set up, so that you can know to expect that 145 days. You're gonna want some days in there to practice and review, uh, maybe play games for math instead. So if you're required to do that 180 days, I actually really like that this is 145. Something I love with Generations Math is that the math toolbox is all things that you probably have at home or should get anyway. Uh, so here is a look over what you can expect to get. These are all manipulatives that we already have on hand. There is a note to the teacher at the beginning and then your scope, everything that will be covered. So if you need to track that for the state that you are in, this is a really easy way to put that down. This is where we get into some really surprising things though that I wasn't expecting to have covered. Um, so I will show you some pages later on, but know that you are going to get into multiplication. You're going to get into data collection and even division by the end of this book. If you're a teacher that really likes having a schedule pre-written for you, you're going to love this. This is designed to be done four days a week uh, and then some memory work built in there as well. There are several things I love about Generations Math. One of those is how they have a biblical worldview, a perspective of God's design and purpose with math and how he uses math in creation. It is all built right in here. So right away, welcome to math. God made many things. You're going to talk about that. Uh, studying God's numbers is day one. Today we will review God's numbers up to four digits. So. If your child has not learned up to a thousand yet, just know this is where we are starting with. We are all the way from ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, right away starting off. We're gonna skip ahead to day 11 and I'm gonna give you a little overview of what you can expect here. Um, using science to explore God's world. So right away at the beginning, you just have this little spot for the teacher to know how long you can anticipate a lesson taking. Usually it's about 15 minutes of instruction from the parent or teacher. We want to be praying before we start the lesson, especially for kids that really struggle with math or don't like math. Prayer is a great way to start that out. Uh, memory work. So if you're still working on counting by ones and fives, up to 30, that's what you're going to maybe do some practice with. Then you're going to read the lesson. Now I have this highlighted here. Data is true facts that have been collected to help people understand something. True facts. In our book, Less Level One, it actually talked about truth and how um, math is unchangeable. <laughs> there is a truth. There is a solid foundation um, that can't just be whatever we want it to be. It is this. And so just having those things built in again, reaffirming that I love it. So then we're doing data collection here. I thought that this was really fun way to do this with your kids. Here they're talking about like if you went into your garden and you collected 200 bugs and these are the different kinds and you're going to track the data on there. What about vehicles over on the other side? Now we're doing tally marks as well. And then you're going to turn the page. This is still, that. well that was the end of day 11 actually. So the next page is day 12 and there is practice. So actually on this day, typically what happens with my son, I do like the beginning lesson with him, but then when it comes to practice, he's able to do this day on his own. I just check it over real quick uh, when he's done to make sure that he did it correctly. The answers are provided in the back of the book. And that's something I didn't say yet that I should definitely point out. This is the only book you have to purchase with uh, Generations Math. It is teachers and students all in one, which I love. I don't need to try to keep track of multiple books. That is a little bit of why it's so thick. Um, I actually like to rip these out by unit and hole punch them and just give my kid one unit at a time so that he's not holding this big chunky book. 
let's get back into it. Day 51, multiplication in God's amazing creation. Stick with me here because there's going to be a lot coming up every 10 days. Just about we're learning something new. So we're doing multiplication. I love this. I have a set of twins. So I love that we're starting with talking about twins. Um, it explains multiplication a little bit more. You can see there's a bunch of scripture embedded in there. Um, be fruitful and multiply. It's a fun way to add that in. Uh, what about like litters then? If your kids love animals, like how many uh, babies are born into a litter of a specific animal? Just another fun way to bring it in. And then the students exercise there. Chapter six and starting on day 80, we are now doing measuring, making, and naming angles. Angles, you guys, you are going to get out your protractor for your level two child. I was really surprised that this is in here. This is something that I haven't necessarily seen in some of the other books at or maths at this level, um, but super fun. So they're gonna start learning about angles, degrees, acute angles, right angles, obtuse angles, and then drawing those. I think my kiddo is gonna be so excited to be doing that in here. And then day 62, we're talking about intersecting lines, perpendicular lines, uh, flags, how fun is that? And then we're going to continue to do some review on the next days as well. Skip ahead to day 70, we are talking about diameter and radius. Look at that, how God uses circles and made circles. Uh, this is really fun, I really like uh, circumference books. They're like picture books about math for kids. So it's about this knight. His name is Circumference and he has a wife named Diameter, Di, Di of Amateur, I think is how they say it. And then Radius is their son. It's a really cute book that really makes it stick in your mind. So I would check that out. I would definitely be reading it with my kids at when we cover this level. If you would like to see a comparison video between Generations Level 2 and Apologia level two, let me know. I would love to do that comparison, but based on the comments and demand that would be for that video uh, is when I will release it. So if you want to see that comparison sooner rather than later, let me know down below. Skip ahead to day 77. I wanted to show you this page. This is actually really using a lot of logic with your kids. Like we want to go to all these different places, but we want to do it in the shortest amount of time. Actually, specifically what this one is talking about is if you were doing like Meals on Wheels with your family, if you were delivering meals to houses around your town, what would be the best way to do that? I think this is really cool because this is something we've done as a family and been really frustrated when we don't pre-plan it out and make sure that we're doing it in the like right order and saving time doing that logic. This is so good. <laughs> something I need in my own life. And as you're looking here and you're like, man, that's a lot of words. I love wordy math because wordy math helps tell your kids why they need to know something rather than just relying on you to explain why they need to know something. It really comes in here. Um, it explains God's plan and purpose for numbers, how he uses it, how it helps us to understand creation and the beauty in that. Also how you'll be using it in, yeah, traveling or money or time. So when we get to pay Page 83, we have time that we are working on. Day 95, you're doing measurements. On day 100, we're going to start learning about Venn diagrams and grouping. They were actually already working on grouping in level one, but now we are doing it with a Venn diagram and trying to group uh, these cats in specific on this lesson. Now don't worry, we're still working on multiplication as well. This isn't like a ton of practice, like drill and kill. This is just a page, two pages of light work for them to be keeping those skills up and refreshing them, but nothing that's going to like damage them. I hate this, I know this, I don't wanna do this anymore. It's simple stuff. Chapter 10, tables and charts. So now we're going to get into doing some of those things yourself and seeing how these things help around the house. And a lot of times what I love is they uh, will have like a day that you're gonna go grocery shopping instead of doing this. Um, I don't remember where that was in here that I was reading it, but it was uh, dealing with money, I believe, and like go shopping, compare, how much did it cost? What about these other things? Get the receipt out, understand that. 
And I think those things are so beneficial for our kids. Um, this is like a growth chart, ages of my friends. Look, there's pie charts. There's all kinds of different charts here that they're already introducing to your kids. Your kids can handle this. This is so good for them to be stretching their minds and gentle introductions too. So that later on when these things come up, they aren't so scary or overwhelming. Oh yeah, that looks familiar. I recognize that. I know what that is really healthy way to do that. We're also using months of the year in there. So there's a lot of uh, circular ways, spiral ways of learning being incorporated. So by day 129, actually I see from the practice the day before, we're already working on some of these divisions and fractions. So it must have been introduced a little bit sooner, but right here, division in the real world and how we use that, um, even seating on a plane. I think World Watch had a video recently showing how they figure out what groups or zones to load. So for the fastest loading on planes, that was really interesting. We love World Watch news, but even here we're talking about using those things to explain division. But division and fractions was not something that I really expected to see introduced in level two. And I'm so glad that they do that, that they challenge the kids, that that's available for them to already be learning. With that, you talk about fractions. What fraction of the pie do you want? And this is a lot of things that you can just do around home too. It makes it very understandable as a parent how to be introducing these things to your kids as well to be doing that, not just here. So if you're worried about like there aren't as many games or hands-on activities, those things are actually incorporated quite often in here, uh, but like it'll be like a note to the teacher or a suggestion of what to do. Um, but they're really encouraging you to do these things in real life with your kids. And that is my preferred method of teaching my children anyway. So sometimes I'll see what's going on and we'll just go and do that and maybe even just skip the handwriting in the book, we'll use it in a real life scenario. Balancing and comparing weights is one of the last things you're going to do in here, which ends up with your kids in the kitchen with you making a recipe for the final day. I can't wait to get started with this one with my son, but that'll still be a while because we are still just over halfway through level one with my youngest son. He is loving it. We never have tears going through generations math. It's a great price. You can find it for a great price. I think this is super worth it. If you are excited to see a comparison with Apologia, again, let me know in the comments. And until then, you might wanna check out this video next.